So once we go down here, you may not recognize this room, but we have actually seen it before. If you remember, we were actually staring from the other side of the gate, because there's the switch, there's the water plants, so it might all start to come back to you now. So now we can open the- we can step on the floor switch and open that gate. We can also grab a water plant on our sword. And hop down. Remember, there was this hand here before. Well, now that we have a water plant, we can actually defeat this guy. And there is good reason for doing so. Let's let him harden. A couple spin attacks, that'll take care of him. And once he's defeated, the magma will lower. And as you can see, if you look at the top of the screen, there's a passage that we can get through now. Uh, now that it's lowered, and that'll let us get through. This is a cool little floor here. I kind of like this, that you can see it underneath. <laughs> that, that's a nice little touch, if you ask me. So once we open the door beyond, there's just this uh, one little platform we're on. We can open the chest. And we'll actually get our fourth empty bottle. It's been a while since we've gotten one of these, but here's the fourth one. Our pouch is full, of course. Gonna be sent to item check. Uh, we'll probably be bringing it along with us. I don't know. I mean, I haven't been using my bottles much so far, but we might just for, uh, you know, just for the possibility we might need it. Okay, so at this point, that was basically all we needed to do on this little offshoot. So we can uh, just head back the way we came, and our next destination will be that locked door from earlier. So if you don't remember how to get back, we just turn the corner here, go up the stairs, tire ourselves out, of course. I've been doing pretty good about managing that here, too, but oh well. So this will take us back out to the bridge area. And as we head across... And around the corner... Again, that little tone just like randomly coming in when you're not paying attention to the music. I really like it. I think it's good. So as we turn to the left, open this door, this will be where we need to go. So let's go ahead and head down these stairs. There's a bird statue, and finally, we can unlock this door. So we're going to be taken to yet another outdoor area, but we are uh, very quickly making progress towards the end of this. You can see uh, the boss door is actually, I believe, right there. I think that's it. So we've gotten a lot closer since the last time we could see it. Now we're going to have to do just a little more work to be able to get over there, though. All right, so first things first, we've got some archers up here up top. There we go. That's, I don't think they can shoot this far. That's just outside their range. And there's uh, not a lot else we can do besides hit this water plant. There's some, those, yeah, those cursed spumes or whatever over there, but if we're quick enough, they won't bother us. We're gonna have a couple red shoe on these platforms. <laughs> I like the red ones as opposed to the yellow ones, because you can just hack away at them, you know, you don't have to wait for the electricity to go away or anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this room out. Make life a little easier on us. Oh, I got hit. Oh man, <laughs> that guy almost got me, actually. I barely shield bashed in time. Alright, get back up to full life there. I don't like being one heart short. <laughs> So, in this room, there's really only one way to go. This is going to be able to, uh, we're going to have to open that up later. You can see there's a floor switch on the other side. So, let's head back up the stairs. And around the corner here. If you take a look, there is actually a, a water plant there to make a platform. But because of these kind of walls here, there's nothing we can really do with it. So, we're going to have to obviously move that out of the way, which means digging in right here. And we're back underground. So, uh, this time camera's gonna pan up a bit. You can see there's actually another magma down here. That's kind of cool. Looks like he's got a lot of rupees in that pouch there, huh? <laughs> That's kind of neat. Alright, so as we hit the switch and uh, make our way up here, the magma's gonna actually freak out, run back down, and move the switch the other way. Hey, I, I kind of need that out of the way, man. I gotta advance. So let's, uh, let's approach him here. And this is cool. This is really the only time I think you get a first-person view of what it's like down here. That's incredibly cramped, isn't it? So, of course, he mistakes us for a monster because Magma's just notoriously bad at seeing things. So he's going to give us a little hint here. As long as the way ahead of him is clear, we'll never catch him. Obviously, we're going to have to catch him to get him to uh, stop closing the gate on us. So what you can do is basically just get ready to cut him off. 
and grab him while he's turning around, because if you pop out in front of him, he won't be able to turn around in time, and he's super easy to catch, actually. So yeah, he sees our gloves. That's pretty much the only way they can identify us. Uh, yeah, and there he actually gave them to me. <laughs> I actually, I really like the sounds these guy, this guy makes for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> so he's of course gonna give us something good to make up for. You know that always works for me. Seems to be the magma way, you know. And yet another treasure chest is dug up for us. So yes, the monsters seem to be looking for something on those cliffs ahead. So, that takes care. I don't want to see it get skewered or so, yeah, pretty much. So, as he goes back down, he's also going to open the gate for us. How nice. Alright, so let's open the chest he left behind. And we're going to get a piece of heart. This one's going to complete our next heart container, meaning we are up to a whopping 18 hearts at this point. And by the time we get the heart container from this boss, we'll be up to 19. There's actually four pieces of heart left to collect in the game. We're getting pretty close to getting all of them. It's kind of cool. Alright, so at this point, we can make our way back through. Uh, we want to make sure to take all these guys out, including the one over here. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Just take both of them out in one swipe. That works. Okay, so now we can uh, utilize this little platform to make our way across. Alright, and step on the floor switch, obviously, to make a shortcut back. Now, at this point, it might be worth saving, especially if you've uh, never done what's coming up before, if this is your first time. Uh, definitely save. In fact, it might not be a bad idea for everyone to do it, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and we'll head on down. So this one, you can already tell it's a little bit different because it's basically just a linear path. There's also stamina fruit along the way. So just uh, something to keep in mind for later. So we can get that and just continue our dash. Hit up the bomb flower. That'll destroy these rocks, and somehow that little pile of rocks is actually holding back this entire wall of lava. So, yeah, we need to get out of here. Obviously, if the lava touches you, yeah, it's instant kill. It's one hit death, so don't want that to happen. As long as you just keep dashing, grab the stamina fruit, don't go for that one up there. You'll obviously just get scorched. And uh, make sure not to run out of stamina and recover. That would be bad. So let's get back to the hole, burrow up, and we're good to go. So there was actually a point to all that. Uh, letting the lava flow freely again causes there to be a flow down here in a previous area. We have actually been down here before. Uh, if I remember, there were actually archers on this platform. We shot them from uh, over here. So there you go. It's kind of interesting where you come out at. Okay, so now that we've done that, we just have to backtrack to that area. That'll cause a lava flow to be going there, which means we can uh, continue further on down. And we might as well take out these guys along the way, too. So let's go ahead and get our platform made here. And we ride the flow some more. We're getting pretty close to the end, actually. Uh, there's only a couple more rooms we're gonna have to go through, a couple more puzzles to solve, nothing too complex. Okay, and now we can continue on to this section, and this is pretty much the end right here. Because if you look up, you can see there's the uh, boss door. There's also a bird statue, which you can return to the sky from here. It's kind of interesting if you uh, needed to do that. I don't know if you could land here. That'd be kind of cool if you could. You might be able to. But uh, we're not going to use that right now. We've also got this stone tablet. And the Bridge of Decision. Choose the path you believe in. Move forward bravely. So as we head back here, this is where we're going to have to remember that legend that the Elder told us at the very beginning of this place. Now, if we look down, we can see there are two statues facing each other. This one's got eyes wide open, it's wide awake. This one's eyes are closed, so it's sleeping. Remember, we're supposed to choose the sleeping statue. So we're going to have to take a bit of a leap of faith and just go. As we do so, just head in this general direction. And uh, don't worry, because as you can see, a platform is forming underneath us. It's really cool material, actually. It's kind of like a blue glass ice type stuff. It's really neat. But uh, that'll let us get into the mouth of this statue. Pretty cool. Got us wall here if you need it. We don't, so we're going to pass. All 
All right, and another battle room. This time we've got a couple of these cursed Lazelfos. So again, no big deal. Just take them out the way you do the regular ones. Nope. <laughs> That's an awesome stance to leave that guy frozen in. Look at that. <laughs> All right, and that takes care of them, sweet. Those guys also drop tons of hearts. I think it's like, they each drop three, I believe. So really any health you lose, you can recover here. It's not too big of a deal. All right, now we can climb the ledge and uh, head into the other door. Make our way through. Now we're gonna have to do quite a bit of climbing here. We're gonna have a little bit of a tower. As we look up, you can see there are stairs and everything going way on up. So uh, there's also yet another goddess wall over there if you need it. And along the way, we're gonna get hounded by these uh, dark keys. So just take them out every time you see them. They're pretty simple. And first things first, we're gonna have to use the claw shot. You may want to go there to continue on, but if you actually look up, there's yet another patch here. Oh. And yeah, you're going to get bugged a bit by these uh, keys, but usually they don't attack if you're quick enough. And uh, some, yeah, sometimes they'll follow you over here where you can take them out. And there's actually a chest in this little alcove here. Where you can get a random material monster horn this time. Not very useful, but oh well. Alright, so now we can look over the cliff and use the uh, other patch of vines here. Drop off, and that'll let us keep on climbing. This one we can just hop on and crawl up the other side. Oh man, yeah, see that actually hit me. There's being cursed. I think we've been cursed before. I think I showed it off once. Uh, it can be kind of annoying because you can't really do anything about, like, anything. So you'll just have to dodge for a while until you can finally use your stuff again. So we've uh, pretty much reached the top here. There's a door for us to go through. Let's do it. And now we're going to have to solve one more puzzle in order to actually get the prize for this room, which as you can see is going to be the boss key. So we're going to have a fairly extensive underground section here. Uh, we've got these four kind of statues here. They look kind of cute, actually. they got like really big eyes and stuff. Uh, kind of cute birds with crowns on them. It's kind of neat. <laughs> I like it anyway. We can read the stone tablet. It's going to get a hint for uh, what to do. We have to light each statue in the number of, with accordance with the number of wings they possess from least to most. And when we do that, we'll get the treasure. So, uh, you don't have to memorize the layout. Remember, you can press Z while underground uh, to actually see what's above you. So, we can go ahead and get this one first. That's going to be our first statue. You can see the next one is just up and to the right. Again, you can use Z to see which one corresponds to which. Let's go ahead and activate that one. The next one is going to be, again, up and to the right. However, we can't continue on that way because that would activate the wrong one. So, what we're going to have to do is uh, make our way over here, hit this bomb flower across, and then head back around. Then once we do that, we can activate this one. You can see there's also one of those enemies to the right, but it's blocked off for now because of those gates. And there's the uh, one with two wings. Now as we head back down, this one's got three, so we want to activate it next. And finally, there's only one left. So let's activate that. And once you do it in the right order, the bars will raise and the treasure is available to us. However, the way back is blocked and of course the way to the enemy is open. So we are going to have to defeat this thing in order to get out. Thankfully he didn't see me there or he would have charged at me. Alright, so if we wait up here, you're going to have to hit this thing three times and it's going to get shorter each time. So we can pretty much just wait at this intersection and then hit it when it comes by. I like to pretty much just follow behind it for the most part here, except in certain cases like that where it starts running towards me. So there are a few ways you can go about defeating this thing. It all just kind of comes down to random luck, really, which way it goes. Uh, if you're next to, like, an edge, like a wall, and you, uh, you can get it to charge at you, it will actually ram into whatever's behind you. Uh, we can... Yeah, so you'll do it there. That'll stun him and give you an opportunity to go around behind him and hit him. It's really helpful for the last section when he's really short. But uh, just three hits and you take him down. I mean, he's really not in too much trouble. And uh, that will open the way back. So let's go ahead and get over there. And finally surface from above ground. I imagine Link was getting a little claustrophobic there. Because, I mean, you saw how narrow those passages were in that one little first-person view. 
be kind of crazy. And we get the Mysterious Crystals, which is the boss key for this dungeon. Okay, so now that we've gotten that, the, the goal is basically just to head straight for the boss door, nothing left to do. Uh, we can speed this process up a little bit by uh, heading through this door, stepping on the floor switch. And as we head back, this little intersection here is actually the one that has the boss door. I know we were climbing for a while, so you may think, how is that possible that we would end up back here? But of course, remember, we fell quite a ways too, so that whole tower was just to get back up here. So you can use the bird statue to save if we want, but now that we have the uh, crystals, we can just go ahead and open the boss door before those guys get wise to us. Let's just kind of turn it over a bit, and there we go. That one can be a little tricky if you don't know which way to do it, because all the crystals are kind of not connected to each other. So that one can be tough to figure out, but once you know which way to rotate, it's pretty simple. And of course, who else did you think we'd meet here? Fancy meeting you here. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> purely coincidence, I'm sure. Oh, it's no coincidence, apparently. We're bound by a thread of fate, huh? <laughs> and then I like this. Look at these old drawings. <laughs> and he just turns on the lights. You gotta get clappers installed in here, man. That'd be awesome. So, of course, he's uh, going to point out these ancient drawings and reminisce to the time where we foiled him at the last gate of time. But he's apparently found out about the second one. So, uh, this noose has just filled his heart with rainbows. Uh, that's heartwarming, I'm sure. So, he's been searching everywhere for it. Thankfully, he hasn't seemed to have found it yet. He got a little sulky. It was frowns all around. I love Garyham. <laughs> He's so awesome. <laughs> and yeah, this is a, a little... The thought of never getting my hands on that darling young girl again. You could find a little less creepy way to say that. You know, it's like, I know what he means, but... But then he found this place. And he's gonna come up behind him again. Watch out, he's gonna do that weird tongue thing next to your ear again. There you go. And of course, again, mentioning the revival of his master, which we know basically nothing about, so it's still kind of interesting. We don't really even know what we're up against here. So now he's not so worried, now that he knows about the second gate. You make your ears bleed from the sound of your own screams. Yeah, I vaguely remember that. So he's going to be willing to forgive and forget if we'll strike a deal. I get the feeling we're going to say no, but let's hear him out anyway. Yeah, like we're going to tell you that, man. Come on. And of course, that says Link's answer right there. He doesn't need to be able to speak to say that. So he's not going to go easy on us this time. Oh, that's kind of interesting. And he's going to go on a little bit about his features here. <laughs> I can't tell if he's trying to intimidate us or trying to, like, give us a modeling portfolio or something. It's kind of hard to tell. But, of course, the one thing he lacks is mercy. We're bound by that thread of fate destined to fight. And I, I kind of like this line. The thread of fate that binds us will be soaked crimson with your blood. He's got away with words, you gotta admit. Alright, so we're having our second fight, finally, with Garahim. Remember, we fought him in the very first dungeon, and now we're finally beating him again. The strategy is basically the same. He's gonna start the fight out the same way as he did the first time. However, he's got these little dagger things hovering around, so uh, you want to avoid... Oh, <laughs> he actually did move. I didn't think he would. 
so you can avoid hitting them, though if you hit them once, they disappear, so you can just continue your attack after that, it's no big deal. Just make sure you block them whenever he sends them after you, or dodge, that works too. Alright, getting a little sloppier. I hate when he does this. You basically have to hit one of them, because doing diagonal strikes regularly doesn't quite happen, so... <laughs> but yeah, it's basically just keep repeating the same stuff. He doesn't really do anything else. Alright, then once you hit him a few times, we'll move into the next phase, which is where the real fight starts. And this phase is actually pretty fun. I quite enjoy this fight. Uh, it's always fun fighting against Scare Him. Uh, when he does that, you need to just make sure that you spin attack the right way, of course. For some reason, he went sideways. When he does this, just dash and he'll miss. And if you do that right, you can get a ton of hits after that. This guy actually takes quite a lot of hits to finish off. So, uh, we're gonna be in this battle for a little bit. And I kind of like the little dance he does while you're hitting him, too. Alright, so these are pretty much the only attacks he's done so far. And, and actually, I'm kind of grateful for that, because these are pretty easy to take care of. Also, if you, uh... Do the same thing again. If you get close to him, sometimes he'll, uh... Just do that, and that means he's probably going to attack if you stay close. Other times, he'll kind of put his swords up like that. And if you can get into the gap there, you can get some more hits on him. So it's kind of hit and miss whether you want to actually go in close to him or not. Basically, what I do is if he doesn't hold his swords up for you to attack, just immediately back off. Because his attacks are pretty quick and can be tough to uh, shield bash of you. Yes, he kind of like that. Thankfully, that one kind of telegraphs a bit, but he's got a faster one. Alright, so at this point, he's going to send some of these after us. Uh, he did an attack similar to this in the first phase, so and we know what to do here. <laughs> Didn't quite jump ahead far enough. It's kind of disappointing. I wanted to hit him with that jump attack. That would have been cool. Okay, and that take care of him. So that went pretty well, actually. I only took one little hit. And of course, realizes we're just a human. A human child, and yet we prevail. You have awakened a wrath that will burn for eons. Whatever it takes, it'll drag you into an eternity of torment. Man. He can be scary when, when he wants to be, you know, when he's not bragging about his physique. But, uh, either way, he's gone. Admits defeat for the time being. Lights up the place, and that will, of course, give us our next heart container and open the way forward. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab this before it hits the ground. We don't want it to get dirty. So our life's increased by once, fully replenished, we're up to 19, like I said before. Only four more heart pieces left to get. So we're just about done with that, it's pretty cool. Let's head into the glowing door in front of us. And here we are, so let's go ahead, we know what to do here, we've done this a few times already. Alright, so we finally got the third flame into our sword. That one looks a little familiar. It's a sacred white light that demons revile.
not get it, my voice should be back. What, no, no congratulations or anything? Yes, we have finished tempering our steel and it is now the master sword. So it's awesome. So we can now awaken the gate of time within the sacred temple. Don't don't say that out loud. Gary Hem might still be here. <laughs> Come on, Fi. Okay, so there we go. That finishes off the fire sanctuary. Like I said, I think it's a pretty neat one, and I hope uh, you know I hope you guys have fun with it too. If you ever uh, play through it, it's it's it fits the theme rather well. And again, I like the music. I like the battles. I, I just like the dungeon in general. It's pretty neat. All right, so since we can save and quit here, I'm of course going to take advantage of that. Our next destination is to head back to the uh, sealed grounds in order to try to activate the gate. So that's what we're going to do next. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.